Dylan Cromer from the University of North Carolina Asheville. Please come over. <laughs> All right. Greetings, everyone. I'm Dylan, and let's just get down to the wires because that's a long title. So, my research project has been about using roughly 100 nanometer diameter silver wires or rows of dots to perform Raman spectroscopy. So these silver nanowires can be used to enhance light that can be used to detect potentially a single molecule. I find that absolutely insane, which is one of the reasons why I enjoy this research project. So let's talk a little bit more about how that works. So the basic method is called Raman spectroscopy. And the way that Raman spectroscopy works is that you scatter light off of a molecule and most of the time what happens is the light just scatters back off and nothing changes. But sometimes the light can excite or push down the vibrational state of the molecule. So molecules have quantized vibrational levels and some of the light is going to change those vibrational levels. When that happens, the light experiences a change of frequency and those shifts correspond to the different modes that are available to that molecule. This is a way that you can characterize that material, and it's a great way of, of doing analysis on materials. There's, there's just one caveat. It, it's a very weak effect. So only a little bit of the light is going to do this. Most of the light is going to scatter off without changing the vibrational level. So it would be really great if we had a way of enhancing that signal and one way that we can do this is called surface plasmon resonance. So if you've got a bunch of pieces of silver, then they have conduction electrons, and those conduction electrons form a density which is quantized into something called a plasmon. So a plasmon is just a quantized electron density. It's a bunch of electrons, but it behaves like one particle, and that one particle can oscillate on the surface of the silver particles. These plasmons have a frequency that they want to oscillate at, the resonance frequency. And what would happen if we sent in light in an electromagnetic wave, either um, like that, or along the particles like that, and we sent in light that was at the resonance frequency. The frequency of the light is at that frequency that the plasmons want to move that. Well, if we do that, then the plasmons are going to create their own electric fields and magnetic fields which enhance the light, and we're going to get massive amounts of enhancement. If we combine these silver nanoparticles and their surface enhancement with Raman spectroscopy, we get something called surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy, or SAERS. And what that does is it takes a weak effect and it makes it extremely sensitive. So that's where you get that single molecule detection capability. Those particles, if you hit the resonance frequency, can get you to a, up to a factor of 10 to the 10th, which is 10 billion times more light than you had before. So here at UNC Asheville, the small group, that's the laboratory group that I'm involved with, we use nanowires as our surface enhancement substrates, the thing that we use to get surface enhancement. So the, the way that we make nanowires is we take something called a periodically pulled lithium niobate template, and basically it has negative and positive domains, and they're aligned like that, so you have these boundaries between the positive and negative electrical domains. Along those boundaries, if we deposit silver, it will preferentially form on the lines, and we get nice little lines of silver. And hence the term nanowires. They're not really contiguous, but they look kind of like wires. So the wires have the advantage that, that that second picture that you saw before, this guy, that's where we're going to get that strong enhancement, that in-between-the-particles enhancement. And so 
the wires, you have lots of little tiny spaces between solar particles. So they should be a good candidate for surface enhancement. And here's um, a scanning electron microscope image up close of some wires. We took this just a few weeks ago. Here's another one. We can change the size of the wires by varying the deposition times and other factors in the growth process. And then here's some larger wires. These are the ones that are roughly about 100 nanometers. The others are a little smaller. So the way that we actually use the nanowires here at UNC Asheville is we have a Raman microspectrometer. And what we do is we take one of those little ferroelectric templates with wires on it. We put a drop of diluted pyridine, which we use because it has a very strong characteristic Raman signal that we can easily pick out. And we put it right under the microscope objective, and we do spectroscopy. The la there's a laser which is going to shine right down there. And that stage and those big actuators can actually move the sample horizontally in increments of one micrometer. That's a very, very precise level of spatial control because what we want to look for is spatial dependence in the signal. And so if we do that, this is the kind of data that we'll actually get back. We'll get a bunch of peaks. Those peaks are the shifts in the frequency from that Raman scattering. And this particular spectrum was taken from a sample that didn't have any wires on it. There's no wires, there's just lithium niobate, and that's the signal that you're seeing. But we also put the pyridine on this sample, but we can't see any pyridine signal. So here's the same sample, but this time we've got pyridine on it, or sorry, this time we have wires on it, still pyridine. And now we can see the pyridine. It's actually that tiny little doublet over there. So without wires, no pyridine signal. With wires, there is a pyridine signal. That sounds like some sort of enhancement is happening. Unfortunately, further data actually conflicts with this. So an experiment that we then tried afterwards, mostly because we weren't able to get the spatial dependence that we've been looking for, which you'd expect we would be able to get, we took um, one of these samples and we covered up half of it, then deposited wires, and once you take the cover off, you've got a sample where it's half of it has wires on it, and the other half won't have any wires on it. And this is, this is an image of the half that had the wires deposited on it, and this is an image of the half that didn't have any wires. Actually, there were a few small spots in the sample where wires did form somehow, I guess, the solution got under the cover, but for the most part the sample was clean and had no wires. So when we take that sample and we do Raman spectroscopy on it, here it, we're zoomed in on the pyridine doublet. Blue is with wires, we're looking at the side that has the wires on it, and yellow is the side without wires on it. And you can tell that the heights, the intensities are pretty much exactly the same. That is, That means that the wires are not enhancing the signal. Confusingly, if you only look at the lithium niobate, the thing that the wires sit on, but you don't actually put any pyridine on the sample, those signals do change. But we don't think that's enhancement because one, that shift in intensity is actually too small. It look, it, it's more like what you would get if the sample wasn't perfectly flat and we're actually changing our focus a little bit as we move across. And secondly, it's shifting in the wrong direction. It actually gets stronger when we move over the half that doesn't have any wires on it. So we got one set of data which suggested enhancement was happening and another that suggested we weren't getting enhancement. What gives? Well. We're a little suspicious about the experimental, some experimental design considerations. So we decided to get just commercial SARE substrates, not wires. These are just pieces of silver that other people have made for Raman spectroscopy specifically. And when we tested those, there was absolutely no surface enhancement there either. We couldn't tell the difference between the signals there. So that means that there's probably something about our setup which is preventing surface enhancement from happening. And we'll talk a little bit more about what things might be causing this problem in a minute. 
But we're going to quickly change gears and talk a bit about modeling surface enhancement, a little bit more about how you can theoretically understand it. So we've been interested in the theory for a long time, and a few semesters ago, we made a really simple model of surface enhancement. It's actually been done before us, but we were recreating it. There's a just a perfect, single perfect sphere that's a dielectric in a completely uniform, non-changing background field. This is, it's, it might sound a little silly because we don't, we're sending in light. It's not a perfectly uniform field. We have more than one particle, but this is actually an approximation that might give us some information about what's happening. When you do all the electromagnetism to compute the what happens, what you get is that constant background field getting really strong near the surfaces. And it pretty much behaves like a dipole. But this, this is probably the only model that you can actually analytically compute with pencil and paper. Anything more complicated we'll, we'll need computers for, and we're pretty sure we have to go in that direction to get anything interesting, because this way of looking at surface enhancement has no plasmon resonance. There's no changing of anything, so there isn't any oscillation. And the, this method of approximating isn't going to give us, uh, especially that, that plasmon resonance depends on the size of the particles, which does not come out of this simple model where we just have one particle. So what we're hoping to do is we're in the process of learning how to use more advanced computational techniques that can solve a model that has multiple particles, moving, changing fields in time, electrodynamics, and will also maybe be even able to handle non-spherical particles. So bringing this all together, our laboratory work has not shown very strong evidence of enhancement from silver nanowires. The reasons that we think this might be happening are Previous efforts to get surface enhancement from lithographic nanowires, which is what we're using now, have succeeded with 514 nanometer light, and we're working at 532 nanometer light. So that's important because we have to hit that plasmon resonance frequency. And if we're creating wires with the plasmon resonance frequency works for that wavelength of light, it might not work very well for that wavelength of light. That's one possible problem. Another possible problem is that our microscope is new and it's having some growing pains. Um, with the depth of focus, the depth of field is just too large. We're, we're, we seem to be focusing on a very wide number of heights at, at once. It's not behaving like a confocal microscope. And that could also mess up our ability to detect surface enhancement. And lastly, our, our setup has everything. Um, there's, there's a picture back in here which shows that everything's kind of all crammed together. We have a small working distance. So that makes focusing kind of a pain. Now all of those things put together might explain why we're not seeing surface enhancement. We also want, so one thing that we want to do is to try to resolve these issues with our laboratory setup and keep taking data. And the, the other thing that we want to do is really get more involved in computational techniques because we don't think that there's anything you can do with pen and paper to model these nanowires accurately. <clears throat> so lastly, I'd like to thank Dr. James Perkins, my fantastic research advisor for all of his patience and hard work. I'd like to thank the physics department here at UNCA. I'd like to thank the NC Space Grant, the undergraduate research program, and Perhaps most of all, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the surfaces, materials, and lithography laboratory here at UNC Asheville. That's Dr. Perkins' group doing research here, and it's been an incredible opportunity to be a part of that and do research with that group. And lastly, questions. <laughs> and please, hit me with all you've got. <laughs> well, this is the usual question. What's next? How What's next? You, so, what I'm 
two, there's two things that I'm specifically interested in, in looking at as soon as we get the next opportunity. And, and one of those is really nailing down whether or not we can get any surface enhancement with our current setup. Because we've got plenty of different things to change. We can change those wire sizes. We can try to mess with our Raman spectrometer setup. And there, there's a few things that we can do without having to like buy new equipment or totally rethink our process. And I want to really get back into the lab and check all the different possibilities because it, there, there's not a clear reason why we shouldn't be seeing any enhancement at all as far as I understand. We, and I'd like to poke around more and especially try different wire sizes since now we've figured out that we can really change their size by varying how long we deposit them. The other thing that I'm interested in is there's um, some software that we've been investigating developed by MIT for computational electrodynamics and I really want to learn that software so that we can work on modeling this further because I think that will be really interesting. I'm more of a theory guy to be honest so that's kind of how I understand things. I was actually going to ask if you, if your setup did work perfectly and you were to try the different wire sizes, do you have any expectations of, of what results you would see, what things would change? So, from my understanding, what I would expect is that there would be one wire size that works really great and we might be able to find some enhancement, maybe not everywhere, but at, at good spots where the wire size is really right there where it should be hitting that resonance frequency. And then for different wire sizes, we'll get less enhancement because we're no longer at the optimal plasmon resonance frequency. So I think that that means that we probably need to keep playing with the wire size and, and hopefully we'll, we'll get something that works really well. But that confocal problem might inhibit that. Can I follow up with that? Um, you were talking about the spacing being mm -hmm. important? Yeah. Does changing your wire size, how much does that affect your spacing? And do you think that that could play a part in what you might see? That could definitely play a part. I'm going to quickly scroll all the way back to those wire pictures. So it does affect the spacing a little bit. Um, these are the smallest wires I think that I've personally made. And you see that, that these are not very developed. They, they look more like kind of piles of sand than anything else. And uh, that, that spacing, it, it's hard to tell this zoomed out from the wires, but I think what we're looking for probably is it's better to have those sharp edges of the things that are, I guess, more closely spherical. And then, then you have more definitive gaps between them, whereas here it's kind of it looks more like this, whereas with the larger wires, it looks more like there's actual big gaps between them. But I don't know exactly how that would affect it. That's, a de that's definitely something we would have to keep in mind while doing this. I was just going to make a, co a comment from, you know, coming from outside this area, that has been probably one of the best presentations. For me to understand it from a student, I just want to compliment you on what a nice job. I mean, you just did that so well, you might want to consider maybe teaching to other students or mentoring. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We've got about uh, three minutes before our next speaker. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We've got 23 minutes before our next speaker. <laughs>